uh, from the field in the ball game. So only nine made baskets by Gentry. You gotta give a lot of credit uh, to the Lady Tigers, especially after that first quarter where they hit some shots early, uh, but great job by the Lady Tigers making the adjustments and getting the stops on defense. Uh, what do we got here? So tonight, Whitney Fitz with six points, Beeks with 22 points tonight. Macy Colchin with 14, Huber with 15, Robinson with two, Smith with four, and the Lady Pioneer seven for Hammond, four for Arnold, four for Thomas, seven for Olds, three for Page, and two for Kristen Fleshner. You know, they did not have a player in double figures tonight. Yeah, so yeah. Lady Don't. Tigers had three, Beeks, Colchin, and Huber. Well, that's going to do it for that game. Now, we're going to take about a four or five minute break. We'll be back with you as the boys warm up and we'll have a little uh, pregame and then we'll join the boys action.
Okay, we're back for the boys game. and Derek, I think I got your headset on. Hang on a sec. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. All right. Well, with about three minutes for game time, you know, our boys come into the game and really, Derek, it uh, looks like we're going to finish either sixth or seventh seed. I think the fifth seed after the loss at Ozark the other night is pretty much out of reach. I mean, it would take some – I think mathematically it may still be possible. Right, right. But I think uh, we'd have to have a lot of help to get to that five well, spot. We'd have to win our final three here tonight, Berryville and Farmington. And I believe Ozark would have to lose, lose out. Lose one or something lose, like they that. They'd have to lose yep. out pretty much, lose all three, yep. which uh, it's always possible. But So it looks like we're going to finish six or seven seed. But the thing I think we should focus on as a boys team tonight is we need to focus on gelling. If there's something I've noticed about this team, they've got talent. Yep. It's just all year long they've not seemed to have a chemistry or something. And we've said it all year. They have enough talent that all they got to do is gel at the right time, and they should use these last three games of the year of the regular season to try to do that. Yeah, and one of the things that we've noticed all year long is we've just had trouble scoring the ball. You know, I was looking at Lance uh, Arguello. He keeps the stats for the boys' team. He showed me the shot chart, Lynn. We have so many miss misses around the basket. We're shooting, uh, I think it was 30, 30%, 30%. 30 something percent from the two point just inside the lane area so we got to start hitting those those little easy shots that you'd like to convert more often than not and then defensively you know I don't think we've got the type of team <coughs> the type of team that's just going to go out put up a lot of points and outscore people right. you know we've got to find a way defensively to get stops play solid fundamental defense get rebounds and then on the other end find a way to get some of those cheap baskets because our offense is not going to be one of those that we can just go out and, and score 70 points a game. We're just not going to be able to do that. So, Well, Lance, uh, you've got the stats right there in front of you. What I mean, as you look at that, what do you see? Well, we're only shooting 40% from the uh, two-point range. So well, I tell you, we're going to have to really play and get that down. And then from three-point range, we're only shooting 27%. So we're going to definitely have to step up tonight. Uh, that's where we're, we're hurting. Turnovers aren't as bad as we thought they were going to be. Only average, only have an average of about 11 so far. So we're we're not as bad, but we've got to definitely bring the underneath the basket game tonight. Well, the starting lineup is Ryan Hockenberry, Dustin Stofle, Dustin Dusty Haig, Brent Barker, and Blake Boyd for the Pioneers. And for the Tigers, here comes Cameron Dowdy. Number four, Ty Tice, also a starter. Dowdy's a senior, Tice a junior. Cooper Winters, he's a senior. He was the starting quarterback for the football team, and he's done a good job for the basketball team. J.D. Speed, he's a junior, and another junior, Jacob Storley. So three juniors on the floor tonight for the Tigers. And with, you know, the team, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken right now, Derek has four wins on the season. Right. And two of them have come from Gentry. Right. One in the Salem Springs tournament. I don't know exactly what that tournament was called, but it was over in Salem Springs. Yeah, yeah. We beat them at their place. Uh, I believe it was over Christmas break. And then uh, we had a, a victory uh, over Pineville. Or is that who it was? Don't remember. And it was early we, in the season. We and beat then somebody over at Berryville. Westville. We beat Berryville. Okay, Berryville in conference. Yeah, was, that was the one I was, was talking the, Okay, about. Pineville maybe over there. Yeah. Had a few a few close calls along the way. Lost to Ozark by one. Played we played some teams tough in and out, uh, with the exception of P Ridge. We just haven't we don't match up well with them. But uh, maybe we can get things going on the right track tonight, and uh, get some momentum headed into that district tournament that starts in uh, just about a week and a half. Well, the Tigers control the tip. JD Speed. With the ball. Well, Derek, as we start the action. I got a text message from Doug Allen, and he told me that uh, <laughs> he's told me to give a shout out to his nan. <laughs> and his grandmother is in Sanibel Island, Florida, and we give a shout out to her tonight. Uh, 
Landon, he'll he'll see some action, but he's got on some bright socks, so you can find him tonight, <laughs> man. So he'll I, be he'll be on he'll be on the court in, in 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 due time. I don't figure it's 20 degrees down there in Sanibel Island. Do you think? I <laughs> bet it's not either. I bet she's enjoying some nice weather. <laughs> Pioneers moving the ball around well. Gets a good shot off. No good. Dowdy with the rebound. Dowdy's coming down. Winners. Nice. You know, Storley plays a nice baseline. Are they going to give? They're going to give it to him. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll take it. We'll take it. Count the, the basket. Well, if I was a Gentry fan after seeing how many they had in the first half <laughs> yeah. with the girls. I mean, the, not first, the first yeah. game with the girls. For us to get that one now, Storley. Uh. Storley has good footwork, I think. And he yeah, he really does. Jacob's played uh, well offensively the past few times that we've seen him. The thing that, that's been hurting Jacob is foul trouble. He makes and, the, he uh, makes the little yeah, nice three. job there. Prairie Grove comes out in a little diamond in one press. They had a lot of success with Gentry on this press in the uh, game. At, wow, it's going to be a foul on Cooper. When they played him in the Silom Springs tournament, that boy, we had a lot of success with the press. Well, and that's one of the reasons, you know, you, you pressing sounds great, but when you get when you get beat on the back end of it, and then allow them to get to the free throw line on a layup, you know, you're not going to be able to press very long uh, with those kinds of fouls. So we've got to do a better job of containing the ball in the back court, and then uh, recovering when they do break the press, and not allowing a, an easy opportunity at a basket. We remind they missed both free throws. We remind those watching to. You know, post on the comments page on pgtigersonline.com. 3-0. Just getting underway here in the boys game. Nice ball movement. J.D. Speed for three. Bottom. Hey, hey. Six to zero. Well, that's a nice, nice outside shot. Nice hands there. Storley lays it up and in. It's eight to zero, and Storley... Wow, there may be a five-second call here. And there is a steal. And back to Storley. And oh, wow. One. Hey, <laughs> nice hustle there by Ty Tice. He gives it back to Storley. Storley's going to be in double figures yeah. before we hit the four-minute <laughs> mark of the first quarter. Oh, the press doing his job the last three times that Gentry's had the ball. We got beat on the first, the first opportunity and now converting some turnovers into points. That's nice to see. Storley makes it. He's got eight points. And the Tigers are up 11 to 0 to start this thing. Coach Elder, get that other point up there. Somebody might want to inform uh, Coach yeah, Elder. We've... There we go. Okay, he's a little I, slow on the trigger I, over there. I told him we had the uh, <laughs> Coach Elder watch it 25 minutes. I saw it when I Did went you? took the, uh, the break. <laughs> I said, we got 25 points while I go. We had the elder watch. There is Cameron Dowdy for three. No good, but Cooper Winters gets the rebound. Nice. Oh, good pass by Coop. Tice unable to hang on to it. And, boy, there's a bat. Tice gets it back. Pulls up. Jumper. Won't go. Winters with the rebound. He's going to get fouled. We got bodies all over the Man, place there. My goodness. Yeah, one thing about it, I'm looking at my little shot chart here, Lynn. Uh, Prairie Grove's taking eight shots in the first uh, – Two minutes and 50 seconds. Gentry's only got two attempts at the basket. So, nice pace of play here for the Tigers early and getting a lot of shot opportunities. We're 50% from the field, but we've taken a lot of shots here in the early going. Cooper Winters misses the first free throw. He's going to have a chance for a second one here. Second one on the way. This one's going to drop. 12-0, 5-10 to go here in the first quarter. And Gentry's having a hard time with this press. And there's another steal. Oh, and Ty Tice gave that one up. Souffle, pull up jumper, no good. Well, Tice got caught up. You know, it was a nice steal there by the Tigers, but got caught in the air there. He's got to come down with the ball or not leave his feet, I guess I should say, or nice. take that shot. Nice defense there by Cooper Winters. Arguello, Derek Arguello now in the game. 
Arguello takes the three off the mark. Winners with a rebound. Pull up jumper from Winners. No good. Winners gets another rebound. Puts it up and in. 14 to 0. And Coach Price is going to take a timeout. Yeah, good start to the game for the Tigers. Now 11 shot attempts uh, as opposed to just the three for Gentry. So the turnover is really causing havoc uh, right now for the Gentry Pioneers. You know, you got to feel bad for Gentry, Lynn. I know last year I don't think they won a, a basketball game. And, and you don't. The only team I wish that on is maybe Farmington. Oh, no, I never would say that. Other than that. I would never. Okay, was that? I would would never say that. I've got some friends (laughs) over there. Okay. Uh, But, yeah, you know, Gentry's had some some down years. But one thing about the Gentry program is. (laughs) Mine's up the road a little further. (laughs) Do what? (laughs) The team I wish was up the road a little further. (laughs) Anyway, keep going. (laughs) I noticed the Gentry boys are the one seed in the junior high tournament, so they got a real strong junior high program. So maybe Coach Price has got some got some help coming on the way in the in the junior high program next year. And Derek, I haven't kept up exactly. Well, nice job again on this press. Wow, nice block there by uh, that's Brent Barker. So, yeah, uh, how are our junior high boys doing, Derek? I think they finished fourth in the conference, but. One of the interesting things, and we can talk about it when we get a break, is uh, the team that finished first was Gentry. Uh, there's a turnover by the Tigers. Uh, P. Ridge finished second. That con- Wow. Hey, look Athletic at that. play there. Brent Barker took it up hard. And the Pioneers get their first basket at the four-minute mark, 14-2, Tigers lead. You were going to say. Yeah. The, no, there he is. Man, I said he might have 10 points by the point. <laughs> He's got it, huh? 50 seconds. He's got 10 points. He's got it. Uh, but anyway, the second the second seeded team was P. Ridge, who beat Gentry, actually. And then Prairie Grove, We our junior boys beat P. Ridge. So uh, we've got a, a decent opportunity to make some noise in that junior high tournament. I think our girls ended up the one seed. They were in a three-way tie uh, and ended up winning on points. So they get the one seed. Not, oh, they're going to call over the back that time on story. Nice move by Cooper. 16-2, to two, the Tigers is maybe their best start of the season. Lynn, I see Delton Rhodes over there. I haven't seen Delton in the gym yet this year. He may have been here a couple times. I just missed him. but yeah, I think he was here one game. Okay. One other game before this one. Well, he's sitting next to him is Chad Battles. Yep, there's and, Ch- yep right and, next uh, to him. I actually saw both of them on the break. Uh, gave him a hello. Nice job that time by Dusty Haig. I might have to tease Chad. He must feel secure in his manhood tonight wearing that pink shirt. So. <laughs> no, but Delton was a heck of a scorer. I mean, he he had a couple 30-point games last year. And yep. Chad, he had, you know, I remember the first game we webcast last year out there in Lincoln, and Chad had a heck of a game the first game of the season. Yep, so. yep. Call a foul there on the floor. 2.35 to go, 16 to 4. Justin Dufle, and here comes Landon Allen. Nan, here he's coming. He's getting ready to come in. He's got his bright here, yellow socks on. Here comes socks. D- don't adjust your, your computer yeah. settings, your color settings. Yep, yeah, it's fine. And <laughs> all of a sudden coming back in is going to be Ty Tice. He's, he's going to check in for Derek Arguello. But Landon Allen into the game. Landon's played really well. You know, he come from the, you know, great field goal kicker for uh, the Tigers for the past three years. And, you know, before, here's J.D. Speed for three. Bottom! Wow. Yes! J.D. Speed hits his second three, Derek. 19 to four. He J.D. Comes shoot being, the ball well. He was off a couple of days sick, all this sickness stuff going around. Boy, maybe he needs to get sort more often. Allen awesome. goes down, but... Haig's going to get the basket. Now I was going to say about Landon. You know, before Landon was our field goal kicker, I don't believe Coach Absher kicked extra points. I, I, I didn't know I didn't know if it was even practice. But uh, Landon came out, and he became a weapon for there's Ty Tice for three. Bottom! That's a deep three for Ty yeah. Tice. 22-6. Landon Allen, good rebound. Boy, the Tigers are pressing the action here in the first quarter of the night. Tice going baseline. He's got J.D. Speed out there. 
Nice. Oh, nice ball movement. There Good go. job by Cameron Dowdy. 24 to 6. Cameron, nice. You know what? That's that's some growth there by Cameron. You know, yep. as a junior, yep. he would have probably taken that shot right there. He gave it up, found the open man, and it was a really a great high percentage shot there by the top. Whoa! Oh. Whoa, I hope everybody's okay there. That boy Ty's lucky to come up as quick as he did off of that one, Lynn. Coming back into the game is Storley's back in. Leighton Smith, sophomore in. And Derek Arguello in. So on the floor is Tice, Arguello, Storley, Landon Allen, and Leighton Smith. Our two taller players in there right now. Storley goes to the basket hard, doesn't get the call. Tice comes up with a loose ball. 49 seconds to go. Nice job. There we go, Leighton. Nice pass by Derek Arguello. Yeah, Very nice assist. Real nice ball movement here for the Tigers in the first quarter. Just getting all the looks they want, getting a lot of easy baskets and making them. That's going to go off his foot. That, yep, good call. Good call. 26 to 6. The Gentry people didn't like that one, but it was a good call. Yeah, it was. It was. I don't say this right. often, but <laughs> for the most part, in the game for five quarters, easy, I easy. felt like the rest had done a pretty <laughs> easy, good job. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> And not just because it's been in our favor. I mean, they've really done a pretty good job. Right, of it. right. And you're right. We usually don't say that. And that's because I hadn't seen these guys before. <laughs> hey, guys, that's that's three. Uh, third foul on Hockenberry already. Hockenberry with three fouls. He's He must have all three. For, well, they've got, they've got six fouls already in the first quarter. Man, it's gone by pretty fast. Didn't realize they've been whistled for that many. Well, we may, you know, Coach Elder's going to. We'll be going on that watch early. Yes, maybe. Like yeah, you might be right. Turnover there by the Tigers. 15 seconds. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Leighton Smith. Ball's going to go out. Good hustle by Leighton, just not able to hang on Did to it. Did we miss that shot down here? Did we turn it over, Lynn, that last possession? Do you, we do you remember? turned it over. Turned it over. Yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. And there's Derek Arguello with a steal. And he's going to get fouled, and he's going to go to line for one and one. Derek's going to get a chance to get on the board here with 5.9 seconds to go. Uh, yeah, there we go. They caught it. Looking at Coach Elder, he's getting a confident look on his face <laughs> here in the first quarter. 26 to 6. Well, that clock doesn't run until the fourth quarter, yeah, though, Lance. He's so got we, a lot of confidence. Right yeah, now. he's feeling good. He's feeling good about it. <laughs> Arguello from the free throw line, one and one on the way. Takes his time, ball goes up, and good. Derek, 27 to six, by far, the absolute best start of the season for the Tigers. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Right here at the, the end games of the I've season. Seen. And this is it. You know, Lance just said right here at the end of the season. This, yep. is, when you, this is when it counts. When it counts, that's true. You can there go you over go. as long as you get on a roll at the end. Don't foul here. Oh, and Jacob picks up a foul with 3.1 stinking seconds to go. And that's that's what we were just talking about early. But Jacob's done so well offensively, just been so productive for us. And in this game, it may not in, end up mattering, but that's his second foul there, Lynn, tonight. But in a, in a close game where we're really going to need Jacob, those are the kinds of fouls that you just can't have uh, called against you. You just got to be smart right there. Jacob will hopefully learn from that. And I'm not not commit those fouls in the, in I'm the sure future. Coach, I'm sure Coach Elder was going to, uh, you know, trying to see something there by having him both him and Landon in. But I was really surprised that he kind of put him in there with the last couple of minutes to avoid that foul. But right, it's okay. Right. I think yep. he, you know he feels like the game's thus far in pretty good control. I mean, you can never can count your chickens before they hatch. But it's been a very good first quarter. Lance, how are we looking on stats? We're looking a lot better. 64% from underneath the basket. A lot more green than red. We're liking that. Uh, three for six from the three-point range and uh, free throws, man. Eighty-three percent from free throws. Five for six, doing good tonight. Looking and our good. Our score, and we got Tice with five, Speed with two three-pointers. He has six. Storley, he got ten points at the three-minute and fifty-second mark. He had eight in like the first two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cooper Winters with three points. He's got a basket and a free throw. Arguello with two free throws there at the end, and then Leighton Smith with a layup off of a Derek Arguello steal. So. Two points for him. So that is our 28 points. It's only six for the 
Pioneers. And those six came, let's see, four came from Haig and two from Stoufle. And Lynn, by my count, the uh, Tigers outshot the, the Pioneers two to one that quarter. When you do that, when you're getting that many looks at the basket, you're usually going to have an opportunity to win a game. We shot 18 shots in that first quarter by my count. Gentry only put up nine attempts. Well, it looks like a, uh, a haircut uh, there from John Halbert, who's on the court. <laughs> like he got trimmed up a little bit. John's so quick. There's a nice steal by Landon Allen. Leighton Smith ends up with the ball. On the floor now, scoop winner. Here's Leighton Smith for three. Bottom! Oh. Hey, hey, Leighton. Oh, ho. Leighton. Leighton Smith now with five points, 31 to six. He's had the last two field goals for the Tigers. And another steal, Leighton, ah. Thirty-one to six. John's got quick hands, guys. He'll he'll cause a couple of turnovers here. Oh, absolutely. I well, I tell you, the, the last week there's a shot on the way, no good, nice rebound by Cooper Winters. Last week against P. Ridge, if you remember, Derek, we were down by like third. There's Johnny feeds it in there to Landon. And Landon's going to get a foul. But last week against P. Ridge, we've been down for a lot. Got it down to like 11 points. He yep. stole it. Yep. Should have got the foul yeah. call. Yeah. Didn't yeah. get it called. Yeah. And then they went down, hit a three. I think there was like a three. We got a foul them or yeah. something at yeah. the same time. And all of a sudden the game went out of hand. Yep. They could have gone from being, you know, 15 or 16 down to nine. And that's manageable. Yep. Yep, you're right. That really changed the momentum of the ball game, and we never recovered after that. Three-pointer, no good. You know, Gentry's had some decent looks. They they just have not shot well. And the pressure has just been been tough for them. And also, Hal Halbert before that had already made a couple of steals and had gotten that mo first time right. we heard from, yep. heard from the student section the other night. Yeah. He got <laughs> yeah. them all fired up. <laughs> yep, the crowd was into the game, and it was, it was short-lived, though. Guys, yeah, that's two on Landon. Landon now has two fouls, 31 to six, and Tigers I lead. I think that's Landon's second foul here in this quarter. Yeah. Yeah, two quick fouls. But I think one of the things you were talking about, Lynn, as far as gelling with this team, is you look at, at the guys out on the floor, you got five guys that have played significant minutes. Then you got the four guys over there on the bench. So we're nine deep, pretty solid. And then you add in Tanner Purcell, who was starting at the beginning of the year, and who hasn't got, come in the game yet. You got uh, Doublehead has played a little bit as well. Doublehead, who's I don't I don't see him over on the bench tonight. Uh, but yeah, you know we that may be part of the the gelling process is is that we're not just five or six deep. We can play nine or ten guys on a, on a consistent basis. It's finding that mix and match of look who's Hall playing well at the right look time. Those quick hands from John Halbert. Landon Allen goes up strong, no good. Cooper Winters comes up, no good. Puts back, no good. Again, no good. <laughs> Winters still battling, and he's going to get a foul. <laughs> well, that, that's going to add to your red inside that uh, lane there, Lance. Yeah. Three, three or four missed shots right there around the rim. 31. Nice offensive rebounds for the Tigers, but. 31 7. Now he's going to get a he's one and one. get to shoot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the third foul. Third on Stu Flay. Third foul on, on Stu Flay is only a sophomore. I thought we've said his name before. But he's got to have a brother. Okay, but yeah, I maybe imagine. so. I remember seeing it in football yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> Did you? Winters makes the first one. He's now two of three from the line, 32 to seven. Free throws are looking good tonight. Yeah. Jinx. I missed I, my fault. Oh, he stepped <laughs> over the line, so that didn't count on me. <laughs> Woo. 32-7. Wow, Aguero almost got there in time. Well, we're getting close to that 10-second call. They get it over. 32-7, 25-point lead for the Tigers. Biggest lead's been 26, and there is a steal by Ah, it's a steal and then a turnover by Halbert. Yeah, Coop. That's going to be the 16 foul. I believe that's Cooper's second. Yeah, and as you can see, our, our post players, you know, we're 
we, we played so aggressively, pressing full court the entire game, but all three of our post players in, in foul trouble right now, all with at least two fouls. Well, the thing, I, I've, I've been a believer that we could, we could do a lot of this pressing just because uh, we are so deep. Here comes Storley, Dowdy. All five. We're going to go five for five here. Yeah. And now well, three fouls on, on Landon. I think they're going to get Landon. Yep. And that's three. Well, John Harbert, there was a point in the season I think he was averaging about a point a minute. He wouldn't get a lot of time, but when he scored, he scored a lot. His average is going down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's a hard pace to keep up. Yeah. Point a minute. John's a, a great young man and great athlete, good, good football player, basketball player, baseball. I imagine if you played him in chess or checkers, he'd probably be good at that too. Yep. Second shot on the way, it's good. That was number five, Robbie M Macy. Hey, he's just checked into the game. 32-8, five minutes to go here in the first half. And it's nice to be able to sub like Coach Coach uh, Ed did here. Here's Cameron Dowdy. He had it. He thought about it. Now he's going to drive. Nice job. Cameron gets his own rebound, feeds it to Tice. Tice drives, lays it up, no good. There's a couple of those inside shots. You know, one there's a good thing about having a 32 to eight lead because you have a 32 eight lead, you're winning. Yeah. The the bad thing is you get a little sloppy because you know you have right. that big lead. Yep. That focus doesn't always. Nice, nice job. Nice finish by Ty. there by Ty. Yeah, the focus kind of goes away once you hit that. Oh, about 15, 20 point, especially you see it happen in the pros in college and especially in the high school game. Happens a lot of times. Three-pointer on the way, in and out, no good. Rebound goes to Tice. He fought for that. Here's Cameron Dowdy, goes baseline, nice job. Nice block there by number 23. Nice block by Alex Ellis. Somebody's gonna get a one and one here. 34 to eight. Well, next, uh, we'll remind you next Tuesday night, senior night, last home game of the season for the Tigers. They will be playing Berryville Hill. We beat Berryville up their place early yep. in the season. We'd yep. like to close, love, we'd love to close our Home court, there's a shot on the way. It's good on the first one one. You know, Derek, I think I may have just realized this, but I don't know if our boys have won a home game this year. See, we beat Gentry at a tournament, beat Gentry there, beat Berryville there, and then beat Pineville or whoever it was yeah, over West at West Fork. Fork. Yeah, so this, hopefully. Purcell thought about it. Tice got him up in there, nice job, but unable to finish. Purcell gives it back to Tice. Tice for three, bottom. 37 to nine, a 28 point lead. JD Speed going for that steal. Boy, he had to walk. They're gonna uh, call foul. Oh. Wow. That's Storley's four, uh, uh, third. Robbie Ma Massey at the line, makes the first. 37 to 10. Winners back in for Storley. And, and Lynn, we, we need Jacob, not necessarily just in this game, but you know, in the upcoming games as we get into the district tournament, we need Jacob to be out on the floor. And that was a tough call, <laughs> to call against him. I think the walk definitely happened before the foul, but. But that, you know, oh, the nice job. Oh! Goaltending. 
Yep, they call it. Oh, they're going to call yep. it. Nice pass by Coop. That was great pass by Cooper. Well, you know, I've said that a few times this year. Great pass yeah, by Cooper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he did a great job on the football field. You know, though, you were saying that that's why that foul, you know, tonight, like you said, with this game, it may not matter quite as much. Nice job by Massey. That's why that foul with three seconds to go in the first quarter, you know, those guys, oh, he's going to walk. That's why those things become crucial, Derek. I mean, right, it's, it's exactly. Like, in, in a game like this, it doesn't necessarily hurt us, but, you know, when we're trying to play a Berryville at district tournament or uh, a grab it at district tournament, which we may be on the same side of the bracket trying to get into a regional, those things can really come back and, and hurt you in the long run. So, you know, Jacob's been a, a real good player for us, a solid player for us all year. We, we need him out on the floor. Haig with another basket, 39-13. Guys, we've had eight turnovers so far tonight. Haig, nine. Make that nine. And now a little run here by the Gentry Pioneers and another Ten. turnover. Ten. Luckily we got that one back. J.D. Speed goes up. He's going to be hammered. Hey, you're right, Lynn. We've just gotten careless. That's, and that's like I said, the, you get that big lead. And yep, you, yep. <laughs> and what we really should focus on right now is playing well together. Yep, Cause, yep. Because, you know, if you can win this game tonight, I mean, you're going to, you know, hopefully close it out. You come back and play well against the Berryville team you beat. Then you go into Farmington with a little momentum. And when Farmington Prairie Grove get together, they, it's, you never know what's going to happen. And so yep. you pull something off, and you're going to the district tournament with a lot of momentum. Yeah, Speed misses either. both. Oh, but good Cooper rebound. Gets the, boy, we have missed. The, there's there's Purcell. He's going to call for kick. Actually, he may have double dribbled it. I <laughs> may have. Oh, well, Whatever Gentry it was. gets it back. Yep. But, yeah, I mean, we missed two free throws. Then we missed the layup. Those are those are opportunities we've got to convert if we want to. Oh, nice. Oh, good hand. Yeah, oh they yeah. grabbed him. Did you see that grab? <laughs> Did you see that? That almost could have been an intentional foul there. Well, J.D. will get a chance to redeem himself with some free throws he's here. Gonna, he's going to get two for that one. Well, not only two, it's there in the double bonus. Right, right. 39-15. Hey, guys, just uh, rumor has it that this morning uh, a bunch of the guys playing basketball all got together and had donuts this morning. So I guess they were kind of getting together. And uh, you're talking about getting that tightness together. They've been doing a lot of stuff together, hanging out a lot together. So trying to work on that. Well, that's important. I think, you know, chemistry in a team and – and being able to trust your teammates, you know, and it, uh, you know, a lot. The thing is, is some of these football players that came back and they've been a great help to the team, but they hadn't. You know, some of them hadn't played in a couple of years. Right, right, and and that's shown at times this year. But uh, you know, you hope, as you were saying, just right here at the end, we can find some momentum, and you never know what what could happen if you get hot at the right time. A minute and a half to go here in the first half, and. Nice basket there by Cooper Winters on the other end that time. But I guess the point I want to make is, is, is getting, as a you know, a guy like Ty Tice who's been playing, can he, there's a three-pointer, no good. He has to get, you, you know, it's taking a season yeah. almost to get yeah. used to feeding the various guys on the team. Ty drives all the way to the basket, and he's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> he's smiling with that. Uh. He, 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 he liked that. How many points does Tice have now? <laughs> 12 points. 12 points, and now a chance to have 13, so Tice. I don't even think he was looking at the basket when he when he let that one go. And guys, he needed this tonight. Last game, he didn't score any points last game, so. That's good. To, yeah. Making up for that tonight. A minute and 12 to go here in the first half. Tigers up 43-15. Best first half they've played all season long. Well, one thing that may contribute a little bit to the, to the sloppiness here, Lynn, we were getting a lot of turnovers off the press and now you see coach Ed's come out of the press Not, boy 22 Brent Barker he's a sophomore he's Lynn. going up he's strong some, yeah well, you think about him he's got some skills and then they've got this ninth grade bunch that's yeah. good yeah yeah you know Gentry's not going to be uh you know they're not going to be an automatic next year nice drive by Leighton Smith he's a sophomore takes yep, it up there that's strong. right that's right 45 17 athletic play there by Leighton as well yeah Gentry Next year, you won't be able to say, well, we got Gentry, we've got a good chance for a win. It's right. going to be tough. 
They'll be young, but they'll be good. All kind of ball going around now down to 24 seconds. Be smart, Ty. Leighton Smith, he's been very aggressive. Drives again and lays oh, it up. Wow. Leighton Smith getting Leighton. close to double figures tonight. 47-17. Yeah, Leighton played well in that JV game when I was here watching. The boys won that game as well. Don't foul here, guys. I'm not sure they know they, how much I don't think left. they know either. Oh, look at that. Oh, you hate Four. to see that give up that easy basket right there at the end. You just stay in front of the guy. They're they're going to have a hard time scoring, but good job of Gentry. I, don't, I still don't know if they knew that, how much yeah. time was left on the clock. 49-17 or 47-19 to go or is the score as we get in or halftime. Here's Braden. Braden, give me the finger there. Not, not that finger, <laughs> the, the point <laughs> finger. <laughs> that didn't come out that right. That didn't come out right. <laughs> he was giving me that, the, the uh, point. Oh, yeah. we, we need to get Braden on here for some first half analysis, yeah, Lynn. Let's see if we can get him up here. See if hey, Braden. Yeah, we're going to get Braden. Braden Clark, right? Yeah. Braden Clark is one of our loyal loyal listeners their watches all of them then as soon as the girls well Braden we've had a great uh, first half what did you see in that first half from the boys that you like well well and the one thing I want to see is that we just come off a big long win you know we need to hit threes yep and I've been saying bottom ever since and <laughs> you know Looking down there at the cheerleaders right now, right now we got everything set up and spoken perfectly, but it's 4 7 19. What, what do you want to see in, the, in the, the second half? What I'd like to see is a continue to play well, Braden, is that you don't want to see us get sloppy okay. in the second half. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you think about the girls' game tonight? Well, 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 you know my girlfriend. She's always a good basketball player. <laughs> but, 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 but other than that, it's a good idea. You know, you know, just Dean is like a good ball player, and I love the way that she plays ball. And good the girl, and the girls are great. <laughs> the girls, the girls, and Lady Lady Tigers did great tonight. Eleven and nine in conference. There we go. Well, Braden, thanks a lot. We appreciate you. Keep keep watching us, and glad to have I you will. with us tonight. Take care, buddy. Take, take your <laughs> Braden Clark, what a great now he is I'll tell you he is a great fan of the of Prairie Grove Tiger sports. I know that he's not only watched basketball, he's been on there for the football games and everything, Derek. And, and Justine Huber. And I tell you what. And Justine. Justine is uh <laughs> a, 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 he, Justine's number one fan right there, buddy. <laughs> We do have this one recorded tonight, cause I, right, guys? Because I'll tell you what, he will come back. It's a, it's on record, right? We got this one recorded. We got it. Yeah, he, he'll he come back and watch that one. I'll give you the finger. I mean the thumbs up on yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Well, we're going to take just a couple-minute break. We'll be back here with you to give you the halftime stats. I want you to try and imagine all the progress that's been made in medicine since 1918. Now try and imagine the progress that's been made in the insurance business as well. Needless to say, the changes have been massive, but Sterling Drug and Prairie Grove has kept up with it all. And Gary Davis and his staff are ready to provide you with the latest and most effective drugs, and they're going to work with your insurance companies as well. While there have been massive changes in medicine and insurance, one thing that has not changed is the quality professional care you'll receive from Sterling Drug. Sterling Drug, keeping you healthy since 1918. Let's face it, life's moving along at a faster pace these days, and every now and again you find that one stop that allows you to catch your breath. That one stop that reminds you of the good old-fashioned values. The one stop that hand dips their ice creams and makes hamburgers to die for. The one stop that can furnish you with propane and pizza and everything in between. And they usually call you by your name and ask you about your family. Well, that place in Prairie Grove is Frederick's One Stop. Serving Prairie Grove since 1975. They say, Go Tigers!
PG Telco is the proud sponsor of PGTigersOnline.com, where you can find out all the very latest of what's going on with all the sports teams right here in Prairie Grove. But PG Telco is more, a lot more. They offer phone, internet, long-distance services, and bundles making it all affordable. And that includes direct TV for your home or office. Staying connected to the fast-paced world is as easy as calling PG Telco. Call 846-7200. That's 846-7200. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Progress. Well, we're back. Uh, Lance, you want to give us some first half stats? Yeah, um, just 50% from the uh, two-point range, which is a lot better. I'll tell you, we're looking good tonight there. Um, 18 for 34 overall. We got five for eight from the three-point line, 63%. Six for 13 from three free throw line. Um, Leighton Smith's got nine points. Cameron doesn't have any points yet tonight. But Ty, a great, a couple of great oh, assists. Fantastic. The way he's driving in tonight, as opposed to just continuing to shoot those three-pointers, driving in and passing off has been great. Ty Tice has uh, 12 points tonight. Cooper Winters, 15. Uh, Derek Arguello with two. J.D. Speed has eight. Storley has 10. And Landon Allen doesn't have any yet, but uh, there again, he's getting some good drop-ins inside. Gentry's only shooting 39%, uh, sorry, 27% overall. They've hit, they've shot eight three-pointers and hit none. So they're, they're suffering right there and they're 50% from the free throw line. Um, so it's, it's, it's been interesting. I, this is like you guys have been saying over and over again, great, great start, best start of the year here at the end. And I think we're gonna have a, a great opportunity to of course win this game, but look good maybe for the next couple of games going into the tournament. Absolutely. Well, and I think uh, Stoufflet has two points, Haig seven, Barker four, Boyd one, and also Rob, Robbie Massey has picked up three points for the Pioneers. Well, we got about 40 seconds before we're going to start here to start the second half. Well, 30, 30 seconds here to go before we start second half. It's 47 to 19, and Derek, I've – the thing, you know, Braden, you know, we, we gave him a chance to get on with us, but he, you know, he asked what we wanted to see, and what I want to see from this team in the second half is I don't want them to be sloppy. If yep. there's anything, it's just play crisp, play well. You know, if they get through this quarter playing like that, Coach Ed will probably empty up the bench right, and uh, get a chance to have some guys play, make sure some guys don't get hurt as you get ready for the tournament. Well, and I, I don't think we'll see full-court pressure defense, you know, uh, with the 28-point lead here in the third quarter. But you're right about the injuries, too. That's one thing we definitely don't want to see here in the early going, especially from one of our, our contributors. Uh, we don't want to see it with anybody, but you would sure would hate to see it from one of our guys that we're going to need uh, down the stretch and at district tournament. Nice feed there by Cooper Winters. Now Storley, he's going to drive a lane up, and Jacob Storley. First time he's scored in a while, but it's 49-19. I want to see Storley not foul here, Lynn. I want to see him play smart. He's got three fouls. Three right? fouls, yeah, and probably about, what do you think, eight, ten minutes of action, you know? Total. Yeah, total. So I want to see Jacob play smart defense right here, not pick up a cheap fourth foul. Nice hands that time by speed, just not quite able to hang on to it. Storley's hitting five for six down underneath tonight. 
Three-pointer on the way, and there's the ninth miss from three-point land for the Pioneers. Tice drives. Oh! Nice finish by Ty. <laughs> Got a little English on that one. Yeah, in. he did. Had some spin on it. 51-19. Yeah, we were telling Henry, we're going to have to have him at all the games. That's right. <laughs> or at least uh, at least bring him up to Gentry <laughs> a couple weeks. Hockenberry misses. He's a sophomore. And nice there pass. Is. Oh. That, that should have been goaltending, Yeah, should have been goaltending. I, and that, that's got to be Barker again, isn't it? That should have been goaltending, but yeah, Barker, really nice, nice job by Bar. He gets up. That kid yeah, gets up. he's he's athletic for and a only sophomore. Only a sophomore. Like yep. I said, with him and you know, also on the floor is Hockenberry, and then they got those ninth graders come up. They're they're going to be, and you know, Blake Boyd also starts. Good jump shot there by uh, Barker again. Have it. I was just fixing to say I'd like to see him shoot the ball from the outside to see if he can do that because we've seen him. We know he can take the ball to the basket, but. Hit that jump shot right there. I was just looking down their roster, and they have four sophomores that started. So the ninth oh, grade bunch, really? with the ninth grade bunch coming up, they're gonna. They'll have a lot of sophomores play next. And man, and Cameron just hadn't been able to get one to fall tonight. Yep, another miss around the basket. That's been our Achilles' heel all year. I gotta tell you, I'm I, even though he's not made one, I really like the way he's played tonight. Well, there's a good example. High bottom. Of you know, Cameron <laughs> could have took the ball to the basket right there, but a, a heads heads up play there, kicked the ball out to the open shooter. Nice job by Ty knocking down the three point shot. Yeah, you're right. But you're, and he looked for the like you said a lot of times, uh, and, and historically he may have done that. But that was nice to get the ball up. Looks like Coach Ed's getting ready to bring some substitutes in here at the five minute mark. I'll tell you another thing, maybe not we want to see, but I know I know one thing Coach Elder wants to see. That's a 30-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. There's Storley. He Storley lays it up again. Up. Storley, I believe, with 14 points tonight, 56 to 21. Yeah, he's got 14 tonight. Coach Elder, yeah, he's smiling big over here across the way. He's starting to feel good, starting to feel confident. <laughs> Nice pass. Good job. Storley oh, may got away with a little pushy. Yeah, Should have had his fourth foul right there. Yep, could have very easily had his fourth one. All five are going to come in. There's going to be a sub. All five in. Ty Tice for three. In and out. Storley almost gets the rebound. Tice knocks the ball away from Hockenberry. And here comes five in. We got Halbert, Arguello, Smith, Allen, and Purcell all coming in. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the third. And I got a feeling that the uh, the rest of these players are going to get some action tonight. Yeah, you got both Galligan brothers over there, Spencer Kilgore and uh, Weston Fitz. I've been watching Weston play a lot of years. There's a nice job. Ball inside goes in. Dustin Haig. But for sale here at the top. Leighton Smith played a really nice game today. Yeah, he has. I've been impressed with Leighton. Arguello inside is going to be blocked. You know, really, Lynn, Foul, we've, I mean. we've got a decent core coming back next year. Our guard situation is going to be in pretty good shape with Arguello, Speed, Tice, Leighton Smith, Ty Tice. You worry about the post play a little bit, but you've got Purcell, you got Storley coming back. And then uh, it's the it's kind of the three it's kind of the uh, three four that we're that we may not we got to find somebody to step up in that right, three four position. Right, right. And uh, I've seen a couple of junior high games. Uh, Dylan Sainer, and he's he's a beast out there <laughs> on the floor. He's a a man among boys. Sometimes he's just a, I don't know probably about six two already, and just a great athlete. So. You know, you may look to him a little bit in the post play next year. Well, I know those that have watched Prairie Grove Sports over the years or paid attention will remember his brother, Thomas Sainer, who plays now down at Arkansas Tech. And 
He was a great running back, but he showed up one of those football games. And I'm telling you, they they had put some uh, they put some, some bulk some on him. Bulk on him. Yeah. He was a big yeah. man. Halbert with the ball at the top of the key, feeds it inside. Purcell may have gotten fouled. Purcell lays it up, no good. Okay, we're gonna have to watch. Yeah, he's getting we're, worse. We're, yeah, Coach Elder, he's oh, he's he getting get, 31 points. He's not as set. Doesn't look as happy as he did a few minutes ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look of concern on his face over there. He's scratching his head. Well, we're down to uh, under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. 58-27, shot on the way, three-pointer no good. And, again, I, uh, Lance, they still haven't made a three-pointer tonight, have they? That's correct. No three-pointers tonight. They've, they've launched 10 or 11 of them, I'm sure. Yeah, they're 0 for 11. 0 for 11 tonight. Ah, Leighton got away with one. and that, And that's what John Halbert does. He just, you know, he just, he's so athletic, he got in the right place and kind of forced the turnover. Well, he can, he can recover sometimes that other guys can't just because of, because of his quickness. We turned the ball there over there and. There's Almost nice pass by Arguello and late. nice lay in by Leighton. Finish. That was good eyes there by Arguello yep. to find him. And then, like you said, a great finish by Leighton. You know, we were talking about Halbert. That's one of the crazy things during football season. It, there was a couple of games after he had a bunch of interceptions, and the teams kept going his way. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, do you guys not watch they film? Doing? I was like, yeah. they, they must not watch film. <laughs> oh, there's. Purcell Speaking with the steal. Interceptions. There's Halbert. Lays it up and in. John Halbert. I'm looking over in the student section. Jacob called the line middle linebacker for the Tigers during football season, giving his football buddy the I'm just ovation. Glad, I'm just glad we don't we haven't seen Jacob dancing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever need to see that again. Well, him and Absher did a pretty good job out there together, I believe. <laughs> I'm sure that's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, it's got to be. I think all the Tigers thought everybody else was going to pick that one up. Yeah. Everybody was wanting a, a touchdown catch. 62-27, 35-point lead with a minute to go. There's a three-pointer on the way. Bottom. Ooh, there oh. you go. I got the first three. There's a three-pointer. and Not to the delight of Coach Elder. 32-point lead, one minute to go. That was number yeah. 25, Blake Boyd. After on the 12th try, the Pioneers make a three, and there's a turnover. 62 30, 55 seconds. <laughs> it's another three on the way. Good! And. Boyd make back-to-back -back threes. There's Leighton Smith up and good. Oh, Leighton with the answer. 34, 30, or 64-33. Leighton instantly just became, or uh, yeah, Coach Elder's favorite player on that shot. <laughs> Got that lead back up to over 30. That could Another be three, three seconds in the lane. Wow. Unbelievable. And look at that. Boyd with three straight, after going 0 for 11, now three for 14, three in a row. Five seconds. 29 points. Do we lead. know how much time's left? No. Uh, Three pointer on the way. Oh, oh. This goes in. A 28 point lead, 64 36. The lead has been as many as 35. back with you. We get ready to go to the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's 64-36. We'll remind you that this coming Tuesday be senior night. 
<laughs> we got seven guys that were are on the floor wanting to play. Arguello's going to – so now on the court, we got the Galligan brothers, Parker and Zach, Purcell, West and Phipps, and Kilgore. I think Gentry's still got all five of their starters in, Lynn. I believe you're right. Blake so Boyce, he's found the hot hand. There he is again. Blake right Boy, open. he's a deep three. This time, no good. Kilgore, Spencer Kilgore with the rebound. He's bringing it down quickly. There's Weston Fitz with the ball. You know, Weston had a good game in the JV game earlier this, this evening. Well, we're a bucket away, Lynn. Uh oh, here Gallagher he goes. Come three. on, Gallagher. Oh. No good. <laughs> Coach Collins slams his hand down on the table over there. There's a three pointer on the way. No good. Kilgore. No fouls. <laughs> Is that right? Is there no fouls? <laughs> one foul they the whole have, second half? Yeah, they have one. We have none. Holy oh, walk. He walked, okay. <laughs> wow, there's a lot. The refs are really letting yeah, them play they're, now. they're letting them play a little bit. Uh, they get a bucket here, Lynn. It's not looking good. Can we get one of our camera yeah. people, one of you ladies, one of you ladies on camera, if they, if they make a basket, they make a basket, get Coach Elder on a shot. Or if we make a basket. And they make the first free throw, 64-37. Okay, we need a miss here. It's still one possession. And he makes uh, them both. It's not looking good. 34 or 64-38. Let's see. Uh, Gentry hasn't pressed the whole game, Lynn, and now they're pressing our third string. Gallagher, like he that. walked, and they're going to call him. He, he walked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we hate we uh, we hate to comment on it, but it's very comical. <laughs> it I, is. There's a three pointer on the way. Bank banks uh, it in. It's over. <laughs> it's over now. Spencer Kilgore bring it down. 64, 41. He's still not stopping the clock right now. Those are those are. Oh, see that four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the tricks of Coach Elder. I used to keep the book down there a few years ago. <laughs> Purcell for three. Off the mark. Weston Fitz with the rebound. Kilgore, he's going to take it, drives. Gives it up to Fitz. Fitz is going to be short. Nice pass. Shot up, blocked by Galleon. There it is, Purcell. Oh, he got pushed. Oh, yeah, he got okay. pushed, yep. Okay. <laughs> There's Parker Galligan drives, block. And I tell you what, Barker has played. Barker's got some good good hops. He's had a nice block there. Weston Fitz almost gets the steal. 4.58 to go, 4.57-6. Here we go. And nice defense there by the Galligan brothers. Tell you what, uh, Boyd, Boyd found uh, a hot hand, and he's drive, picks up, pulls up, jumper, in and out. Rebound goes to Purcell. He gives up to Kilgore. 64-41, 23-point lead. 
Nice defense there by Hockenberry. Picks up the ball, and he's going to bring it down. Kilgore almost gets a steal. Free throw is made by Hockenberry. I believe that hits, is that his first points of the game? First points of the game for Hockenberry. 64-42. The 35 point lead now down to 21. 64-43, so Pioneers have played well against this, uh, the team the Tigers have on the floor right now. And there's a steal, they're gonna call a foul on number 23, well, Alex and, Ellis. And this is one thing that I don't I don't like, Lynn, is we played our entire team, had a 31-point lead, maybe 32, I can't remember. But, you know, Gentry's got five guys over there that haven't taken their warm-ups off yet. And this game's going to end up looking a lot closer than what it really was. But I'd like to see those Gentry guys get an opportunity to come in yeah. and play too, you know. And that's what I'd like to see as well. I mean, I get it, though, for him. You know, he wants his chance, the chance for his boys probably to, to have a little success. Yeah, you, know, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right about that. Kilgore at the line. He misses the first one, 64-43. Oh, this, this group of uh, Tigers hasn't scored yet in this quarter. Second one on the way and still haven't. 64-43, 3.40 to go in the ball game. There's Barker. I've been impressed with him tonight as far as his leaping ability. And the walk. 3.24 to go, 64-43. Gets in. They're, they're picked up full court press I here. I mean. Brigo breaks the press. Now stolen there by Barker. 2.22 to go. Back with you here, two minutes, 13 seconds to go. Shot on the way, Hockenberry, no good. Ball goes to Purcell. Tigers trying to get a basket here. There's Purcell. Shot on the way, no good. Ellis is going to pick up his fourth foul. One fifty-four remaining in the ball game. Purcell gets the first basket here in the fourth quarter. Purcell, second shot on the way, no good. Rebound by Galligan, can't put it back in. Massey comes down with the rebound. One minute, 48 seconds to go, 65-43. Tigers gonna pick up their fourth win of the season. I'm sorry, that'd be their fifth win of the season. Let's see, because uh, yeah, we've beaten Gentry twice, Pineville and Berryville, so this will be a fifth win of the season. I still think that Greenland game should have counted because they they hey. forfeited the game, yeah, <laughs> basically. They all played the girls game, but oh well. This Gentry team, I actually was looking on Max Preps today. They beat Greenland by one point. Wow. So they do have a couple wins on the season. I know last year they they went over. That's a long season when you play that many ball games in a basketball season and 
to not have well, any they wins. Have, That's they have tough. Some, they have opportunity for some promise for sure. And uh, yeah, I'll be anxious to see them play in the junior high tournament this week. Uh, I think if uh, the junior boys for for Prairie Grove, if, I think if we win Wednesday night, we'll end up probably more than likely playing that Gentry team on Thursday in the semifinals. Now they so set up, they set it up the same way, or do they all eight teams? <coughs> all play? eight play. Yep. yep, all eight play which makes for some boring games on that Monday night. <laughs> There's a nice steal on the way, and now going to be a foul. Nice job there by Ellis. He's got four. Ellis has four fouls. A minute and 20 to go, 65-43. Tigers only scored one point yeah, so just far one here point. in the fourth quarter. Yep. Ellis shot on the way. No good. Well, we'll be coming to you Tuesday night, be senior night against Berryville. Galligan, nice rebound. Now Kilgore bringing it down. And uh, uh, Zach Galligan couldn't quite hang on to it. 113 remaining. Weston Pitts and Galligan up front, or Kilgore up front. Nice ball movement that time, and a nice play, nice lay in. Number 33, Christian Vang. Another sophomore there for uh, Gentry, 6'4". I'm sorry, that was Jason uh, Mar uh, McCard McCardle. McCardle. I looked at the wrong name there. There's Parker Galligan, no good. Rebound goes to Weston Fitz, 46 seconds. Gets it out to Zach Galligan. Goes inside his brother, nice feed, and a good block there by Massey. 38.9 seconds, 65-45. Well, the Tigers played well tonight. And the thing is, we wanted to see in the third quarter from the, you know, from a lot of the guys that, that start, they didn't, I thought they played pretty well in the third quarter. They did. They played well offensively. I know defensively probably gave up too many points. Gentry scored 17 there in the third quarter. That's one thing that you got to do as a player, Lynn, is, you know, 25 for uh, Gentry, Blake Boyd. He caught fire there in that third quarter, and he just continued to get open looks. You know, as a player, you've got to realize, hey, this guy's hot. I've got to get out on him and. Make an adjustment there. Purcell for three, he's off. Rebound's gonna go to Gentry, or they're gonna be there tied up, 19.2 seconds. Six, 65, 45. Wanna thank all our East Lab students again tonight for their help. Lance and Gretchen for helping out on the stats. We're going to go real quick to the stats at the end of the game. <laughs> and uh, we're going to sign off. So three seconds, 2.4 seconds remaining. And uh, got these stats ready. Lance, I'm going to turn it over to you here in the next 2.4 seconds. That's going to do it. The final score, Prairie Grove 65, Gentry 45. Lance, let's go down to stats real quick. All right, just real quick, 19 for 44 from the two-point range. That's 43% for us tonight. Six for 13 from three-point range. Uh, all together, we shot 44%. Nine for 19 from three, uh, from the free throw line. Uh, did pretty good late and had 13 points tonight. He was 100% all the way straight down. Did, did great tonight. Ty had 17 points. Cameron, no points, but played real hard tonight. Uh, Halbert came in with two. Um, Cooper Winters had his six. Um, Zach, Galligan, Weston all got some playing time, no points. Derek had four points. J.D. Speeds, eight. Storley came in with 14 points, six for seven, 88% tonight from the two-point range, which is fantastic, incredible. Uh, uh, come back and doing real well. Uh, Landon Allen played a good game, no, no points for him tonight. Uh, Gentry shot 34%. Four for 19 from three-point range, 12 for 28 from two-point range, and their free throws were nine for 16. So 56% from uh, free throw range, not too bad. Gentry had 10 turnovers, Prairie Grove. Well, I've got 21 turnovers for Prairie Grove tonight, um, and I, we've got 13, uh, sorry, 14 for Gentry. So that, that's got to change if we're going to see any progress in the tournament. But all in all, great night tonight. And looking forward to Tuesday night here back at home. Well, that's going to do it for.